Good morning and thank you for joining us on PLUS TV Africa. And now it's time for All the Press, where we're going to the major headlines from our national dailies and get into insightful analysis and review of these headlines. And joining me by Skype for analysis is legal practitioner, Mr. Monde Obani. Thank you, Mr. Monde, for joining us. It's my pleasure. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing this morning, sir? I'm okay. <laughs> Great to know. Uh, we start out with the Punch newspaper this morning. And the Punch newspaper, the first headline in the Punch, prepare for total lockdown if COVID-19 cases rise, says the PTF. That's the first headline in the Punch newspaper. And also, Nigerians will pay higher electricity tariffs. Federal government promises IMF. U.S. has repatriated $311 million a batch of loot, says Malami. Senate probes SIP cash transfers, palliative distribution. Evacuation of 700 Nigerians in the U.S. begins on Sunday. And bank customers, transport workers, commuters shun social distancing. 17 Katsina Ondo health workers among new infection cases. Face max hawkers stormed federal secretariat as workers resume. Um, Baris Obani, let's, let's start off with um, prepare for total lockdown if COVID-19 cases rise, says the, the PTF. Now, severally, the NCDC did say all through last week that it was premature for us to exit the lockdown. But we saw a situation where yesterday the, the, the easing of the lockdown began with people resuming walks and people going to their regular place of work. And, and we saw the, the chaos that was on our streets yesterday. Let, let's let's bother on this a little bit, Barista, if you will. Uh, well, I, I think uh, uh, we all anticipated what uh, transpired yesterday. Uh, I mean, when you locked up people in their homes for almost three weeks, and then some of them you were dependent upon daily sales and daily businesses, and some of them were not able to access their banks uh, in order to have some cash at home. Uh, and so when government also came up with the idea of partial lock, uh, uh, opening up of the economy, uh, without being too specific as to which of the businesses actually were open uh, that yesterday. Virtually every person trooped out and uh, we saw the chaos that actually occurred, uh, where all the known rules concerning this COVID-19 was uh, actually uh, observing breach. And, and people were not wearing uh, face masks, were not even social distancing. Uh, it was it was very terrible. And uh, as somebody has rightly pointed out, if COVID-19 is really real, then we expect that what transpired yesterday would have actually uh, potent a grave, uh, grave consequences for us as a nation in terms of our health uh, crisis management. You know, because virtually no, none of the rules we are we observed. You know, and it's very scary, very scary. So if the government now says they want to lock up Nigerians again, uh, I don't know how uh, possible uh, that may likely be. In the light of uh, the present reality and situation, uh, of course, you know that the government also failed in their responsibility in providing the palliatives. You know, you locked up people. You never made provision uh, for their well-being. You never made provision for their for their food and 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 some of the things that they needed. And you now opened up, you know, and say you are you are lives are in your hands. That is what government said. You now have to take care of your destiny. And people were not ready. Uh, to be careful about their lives, you know, going by what we observed yesterday. So uh, I don't know the possibility of underlocking up people anymore, whether Nigerians will actually obey uh, any such further instruction in the future. Now, let's look at uh, the role the government and establishments will have played better than what we saw happening yesterday, especially the, the, banking, the banking halls, um, the bank institutions, for, for an example. Uh, many people have argued the fact that the banks had no business opening up yesterday. Um, by the way, there's not so much of economic activities, import exports going on, and why should they open completely? And even if they were to open, better, better measures would have been put in place than what we saw yesterday and not have people crowd the banking premises and trying to trunk their way into the banks. What do you think the banks, the banks could have done better than what we saw yesterday? And it might continue throughout this week. Yeah, I, I thought I, I saw uh, what happened in Rwanda. I, went, I think they opened up also yesterday, and I saw some level of orderliness. Uh, in the tramp transport sector, I saw you know how they operated. They made provision for all the health uh, uh, team's procedures. They made provision for water, for you know cleaning your hands and all that. We saw it. Uh, and then uh, in our own case, there was no arrangement at all. There was no proper arrangement in the opening of uh, the, the, the economy and the banks. You know, some of the branches were closed. 
Imagine like a place in Ikeja. I understand it's only one branch, you know, in Okwebi that was open. And of many people, you know, wanted to do their banking transaction in that particular bank. And everyone clustered in one particular branch. You wouldn't expect anything less than what actually transpired yesterday when you are opening up the banks and your cashless policy has not become really entrenched. People still deal with cash and they want to collect cash. That again shows that we have to do something about our cashless policy. If we really want to operate cashless policy like other nations are doing, then we need to really up our game. We saw a lot of people going for cash uh, to collect money from the bank. We also saw that the ATMs also were not properly arranged. You know, there was no proper arrangement at all by the banks. I agree with you that it was a total failure on the side of the bank in providing some of these measures that are supposed to be put in place. They never. I don't think they were expecting the number of crowd that actually you know came yesterday and all that. That again shows our level of uh, planlessness you know, as a nation. We didn't plan for anything whatsoever. And what we saw yesterday was evidence of the fact that we are very planless in this nation. We never plan for anything. We always plan to fail. And it showed clearly yesterday. So the government now coming with warning that they will lock up Nigerians at homes and all that without adequate, you know, responsibility. I mean, on their own side, reciprocal responsibility that they're supposed to uh, perform. I, I don't think that the people will totally be blaming everything. Government also failed. Institutions failed. The banking sector failed. Those institutions, most of the people that are supposed to do what they're supposed to do, didn't do what they did, uh, were supposed to do yesterday. And that actually uh, showed by way of evidence. Yeah. Right, but so, Barney, I'll definitely want to put... Um Part of the blame on the government and also some of these um, establishments who opened for business yesterday. But where is the place of, you know, individual responsibility in the fact that we're battling a pandemic? Is it that the people don't necessarily trust that there's the existence of COVID-19? Because with the way they were throwing it on each other yesterday, it, it makes me wonder, like, I didn't know reading the news. I didn't know hearing the news. There is COVID-19. There's a virus killing people. Where is the place of, you know, individual responsibility in, in this fight? Putting the blame on, on the government still and institutions who should have done better than what they did yesterday. Are people not taking the government seriously about the pandemic? Hmm. I agree with you that the, the people ought to show some level of uh, responsibility uh, because this life is once. You come once. And uh, if you if you mess it up, you know, uh, you you be blamed. Uh, I didn't see that uh, adequate, uh, you know, responsibility on the part of the people. They were too careless, you know, with uh, with their lives, you know, and and it was very evident. No, the, the social distancing was not there, and they didn't show any sign that they are worried. They, you know, they they I don't know. There are many persons in this country that feel that maybe this uh, COVID-19 is pure business uh, thing for us as a country, and they're not taking it the way uh, other people uh, in other nations are, are taking it and observing uh, all the rules and, and, and procedures that have been put up uh, you know, by the experts. I didn't see Nigerians observe that, you know, not only uh, in the north, you know, but in the south, you know, where you think that people are, you know, should be properly enlightened and they have been listening to radio and television of the danger of this virus and what it does and how it, you know, gets transmitted, you know, by its sheer small contact and it, and it gets into your system. So one would have expected the, the people to show some level of responsibility. I was also alarmed. I was clearly, clearly alarmed, uh, you know, by the level of display of carelessness, you know, by Nigerians yesterday when I saw the way people were not uh, uh, being careful in getting close to each other during... Uh, the yesterday's uh, business uh, this, uh, 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 transaction, you know, I, I, I became very, very scared and worried. I didn't go out yesterday. I mean, I didn't. I know it's going to be like that. And I also want some of my friends to don't bother. This week, let's, let's actually, you know, examine how this week is going to be like. Uh, this thing can last more than two or three years, dependent upon how serious the nation and people take it. If we, can, we can stem the tide of spread. If we are serious, other nations have succeeded in doing it. Ghana, I mean, China has resumed business where the, the, the sickness emanated from. They have resumed uh, transaction. They have resumed their, their normal industrial life because of the fact that they listen to their leaders and obey instruction. But here, people are too careless with their lives, you know, and it showed evidently yesterday. And I'm not too happy, you know, uh, with the level of uh, display of ignorance by Nigerians. Yeah, uh, many people compare this to the Spanish flu of 1918. Um, the first strain came and something similar like this happened. And then by the second, by the second strain, we had over 50 million people infected with the virus. And 
the world population there, we had about um, 50 million people dying and 500 million people were infected by that, by, that, by that virus, which was like a fraction of the world population at that point in time. Do you think that the government might regret on the decision on the easing of this lockdown? Yeah, but you know that most of the uh, science uh, what one Nigerian, uh, the Nigerian government, not to actually open up uh, the way they did, uh, but it's like the economic imperatives uh, triumph over scientific uh, 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 philosophy. We are too open. We are too sudden in opening up the economy without having regard to history. You just mentioned the uh, Spanish flu, uh, and uh, it was the second you know, when they opened up the economy suddenly like that that many more lives were lost. So one would have expected that uh, with the with issue of history, that we'll be careful in not throwing up uh, the economy just like that. But because the government has also failed in providing for the people. And the pressures were on the government, actually. People were putting pressure that they need to go out, that they're dying of hunger. The hunger virus is even more deadly than the, the coronavirus. And people were not being cut out for. And people that have children, you know, uh, children will be crying in homes, they don't have anything to eat and they don't have anything to feed. So they wanted to go out and, and probably continue with their lives. you know. But then I think that even if you want to open up the economy, uh, there must have been adequate preparation, adequate processes and procedures put in place, structure put in place to avoid, you know, human-to-human uh, uh, -human contact. You know, the way I saw it yesterday, it's, it's, it's something that uh, I'm scared of, you know. And as they rightly acknowledge, I'm talking about the presidential task force, there must have been, you know, serious infections yesterday. Oh, yeah. And they have to watch it. Oh, they have to watch it. Oh, yeah. We have to really watch it. And I think that Nigerians must have learned their lesson. This is the second day of the opening of the economy. I think that people should be a bit more careful and responsible and take the destinies of uh, their lives in their hands and do the right thing by observing social distancing, by wearing face masks. I saw many persons that went out yesterday without wearing anything whatsoever. And most of them also say they have no money to buy the facial mask. The facial mask, the mask now is at least power now is 400 plus, 400 and something a naira. And some don't even have one naira at home, not even a cover at home. You know, so that these are issues. Who are also, I thought that government would have uh, made adequate arrangements for giving uh, to make sure that these masks are given free since they failed to provide palliative. Now, on the issue of safety measures, one would have expected to have this face mask or the sanitizer provided for, you know, by the government, you know, free to the people so that. They can, they, this thing they are crying uh, of saving life, they will be able to succeed in doing it. But that, again, uh, the government also failed there. But the people also failed themselves yesterday by the kind of action uh, they displayed, you know. And it's, on, it's, it's, it's clearly, clearly, uh, I'm alarmed, as I said earlier. I am so scared of, of what happened yesterday. All right, quickly, let's move to the Nation newspaper this morning. The first headline in the Nation newspaper reads, Government receives $311 million of batch of loot from the U.S. That's the first headline in the Nation newspaper this morning. And truck smuggling 92 persons into Lagos, Quara, intercepted. COVID-19, weakest shuts down PH, Obi Akbar. And also, return to lockdown likely, federal government warns Nigerians. And PTF raises concerns over overcrowding in public places. House-to-house -house search for virus carriers begins in Kano. 30 doctors, three policemen test positive in Lagos and Katsina. Uh, and that's it in the Nation newspaper this morning. Government receives $311 million abacha loot fund from the U.S. Let's, let's talk on this a little bit, Barrister Obani, if you will. Now, we, we've seen a series of looted funds, money's been... Um, sent back and repatriated back to Nigeria um, from their bachelor loot. And not so much of what has been done with this money is being said. And now the U.S. is giving conditions. If this money that they return will not be used for their great projects in which the Nigerian government did agree, um, they will be demanding for the money back. Let, let's talk about this for a moment. The looted funds so far from the late general and the use, the judicious use of these looted funds by our government. Well, Abacha keep on sending us a, a credit alert uh, from the grave. Uh, at every point in time, when Nigeria is, a, a, is on a cross uh, road, uh, on a quagmire state, you know, in terms of finance, Abacha's loot uh, keep on, you know, uh, being sent back from abroad. It's, it's a cherry news. Uh, as Riley pointed out, I think the American government, you know, is trying to tell us that, look, the previous loots that were recovered or returned, 
We have not seen much done with such loots. And this time around, we are giving you conditionalities that if you really want this monies back, you must use it for specific things, you know, which eyes can see. Uh, to me, that, that is a sign of responsibility on the part of American government. You know, and we are very happy because we are helpless here as citizens. We don't know what they do with all the ones that have been recovered, all the loots that have been recovered. We don't have any specific thing we can say. This is what we have achieved with all the monies that Abacha, you know, has been, I mean, Abacha's loot that we have gotten back from other, other nations. This is the first time, I think, we are getting this money from America as a, con America as a country, and it's sharing you that they have given the conditionalities, and they have a right to demand for that money. You know, I'm happy that public government signed that like, kind of agreement, even though it must, it must, it's a, clearly an infringement on our sovereignty, but I think they are doing it in favor of a majority of Nigerians who have become very, is as appreciated, you know, by the fact that we have seen and heard about this money is coming back, but we have not seen anything that these monies have been, you know, used to achieve. So it's really uh, something that I'm not against, you know, even though it's an infringement on our sovereignty, but I'm not against it, especially when the motive is for the interest of the people. We have heard and seen several loots return, but for uh, many years we have not seen anything that has been used to uh, to uh, to do. So we need. Uh, to actually be specific now, Abacha loot is coming back. Can we use it to develop this particular, you know, uh, uh, stock, I mean, uh, 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 sector? Can we use it to deal with our educational sector, deal with our health sector? Look at our health sector that is in Shambo. We're having health crisis, and there is no single standard international hospital, you know, in, the, in Nigeria. There's no single hospital today you can say you go in there, everything is intact. Meanwhile, we have the best doctors in the world, but we don't have the best, you know, uh, 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 hospitals where we can treat patients. Rather, our leaders prefer to go abroad, if not for the fact that this particular pandemic has made it practically impossible for our leaders to, to exit from the country to go and take medical uh, treatment elsewhere. They would have abandoned us. And that's why people are also, the, the poor people are getting angry with this uh, issue of uh, keeping them at home. They say if it is a disease that affects the poor, Nobody would take, be, be as serious as the as our leaders are. But because the rich are being affected by this pandemic, that's why they're now trying to force them home and then they want to keep them there without providing any palliatives for them. So most of them in their in such anger and misplaced sentiment, you know, usually now, you know, disobey and say, look, this disease is only for the for the rich. And that's why they're trying to keep us at home. But we are suffering from hunger. They are suffering from the virus. But we are suffering from hunger. And so how do we now balance the equation? So I think that America is very right in what they have done. It's an infringement on our sovereignty, but it's an infringement that all of us are very happy uh, that they have uh, actually you know, asked for. And, and then Nigerian government has agreed to make sure that they implement whatever conditions they have been given to. All right, quickly, your thoughts on um, the, the, the jobs that were saved, and bank, bank jobs that were saved, and the, the CBN and the bank has, I mean, coming together and saving bank jobs. What are your thoughts on that? That, that, that is that is a very proactive measure uh, taken by an institution, I mean, Central Bank. Uh, and I think if they reach that agreement with the banks, uh, I mean, with the, with the institutions, the banks themselves, that is a very good one. Uh, because it's, it's, it's clearly, you know, it doesn't make, there's no logic in it. That recently, this, most of these banks made contributions to the, I mean, to, to the government in respect of, uh, you know, uh, their philanthropy. You know, and you have given so much money, billions, and then all of a sudden you are now waking up and saying that you're going to sack Nigerians and, and put them into the labor market. You do know the consequences of that. I mean, we are talking about this pandemic. We don't even know when it's going to end. And homes you know, didn't make any preparation. All of a sudden you wake up and say you are sacking all of them because of the pandemic. You know, the issue of job security lost. Uh, I, I think the, the, the central bank was very proactive. We must commend them. And I think that it is very improper for any any institution at this point to contemplate, you know, sacking of workers and you know taking them into the labour market. That is not what anyone should expect. Any serious-minded uh, uh, institution or, or, or companies or inter, 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 enterprises to do at this time, we must try as much as possible to show some level of humanness, you know, in this particular period. All of us are going. Let's accommodate one another. Whatever we can do to keep humanity alive and, and growing. Let's go ahead and do it. You know. So I commend the Central Bank for that timely intervention. Legal practitioner Mondo Bani, thank you very much for your contribution on, of the press. It is my pleasure. Good morning. And thank you for watching. That's all we can take this morning on Of the Press. Join us again for Of the Press, same time tomorrow. This is Plus TV Africa, and I am Benny Ark.